Yes, so here on News Desk on Joy News on Morty TV, we are continuing in the Eastern region. And so clearly, the celebration of Easter is one that has drifted from the usual morning of the death of Christ on Friday to marking his resurrection with picnics. The occasion is now often associated with wild celebrations. Report of a shortage in condoms as well as the excessive consumption of alcohol are but a few of how the day is celebrated now. Let's have a discussion on alcohol consumption during Easter. And to help me with the conversation is Richard Opare, an internationally certified drug counsellor with the Addictive Disease Unit at the Kulibu Teaching Hospital. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you so much. And happy Easter to you. Same, same, same. So tell us, I'm sure you've been monitoring... Uh, you know, the consumption of alcohol amongst people during not just Easter celebration, but during celebrations. What has been the statistics you've had so far? Yeah, before I move on, let me make a quick correction here. Um, I rather work with the uh, Opanist. Opanist is an, uh, an, an, a non governmental organization, and um, we have an affiliation rather with the Addictive Diseases Unit of Colibu Teaching Hospital. Yes, Opanist. So you are affiliated? Yes, we are affiliated with the Addictive Diseases Unit. Yeah. Statistics, yeah, well, we don't actually have particularly a number, but I can tell you that when you look at the trend five years, ten years back, you realize that the situation is getting, uh, you know, bad. You know, people are getting into the use of alcohol and other drugs by the day. The sad part is that alcohol is now becoming or has become the gateway drugs to other substances, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, and so on and so forth. So when you take people who are using these substances, you trace back and you realize that it began with alcohol. And that is why our campaign, especially for this particular Easter, is emphasized on alcohol. But of course, we're talking at, uh, about other substances too as a way of people getting to understand the dangers involved in these substances mm. and not start at all in the first place. And, and talking about danger, I was coming to that. How dangerous has this become? Well, he, he, you know, it's quite dangerous because when we look at the problem associated with the use of alcohol and other substances, you know, it's quite, it's quite huge. You know, talking about the medical implications, you know, the, meta, the mental disease or sicknesses that come secondary to the use of these substances, the social implications, and so on and so forth. As we speak now, I'm sure that you're doing a lot of campaigns as far as road safety is concerned. And uh, we say that our roads, you know, will be, will be quite okay when we have people not going on alcohol or other substances and then use the roads. Otherwise, then we're going to have other dangers. But apart from that, then a lot of people this Easter are going to actually try these substances for the very first time. And I'm sure that that is why we are so excited that this platform has been given. So why, why, why do you say that a lot of people are going to try this time? Well, around? because we believe that most people have been predisposed already to do these substances, especially alcohol. We see the adverts all the time on TV, on radio. I've said time and again that I've not seen any advert on radio or TV that is more exciting than the, the one on alcohol, you mm -hmm. know. And people see these things, especially the youth, and predispose them. So for the very first time, they'll be going to the beaches and other, you know, picnics and other things like that. And they want to have a feel of what they had seen on um, TV and what they had heard on radio. Beyond the advertisement on television that could be attractive for these people to want to get engaged in it, any reason why there are soft drinks but people choose to take these hard liquors that end up destroying their lives based on your the research you've done did you find anything like well that? well one thing that stands out is actually curiosity you know when people see when you make it attractive when it's so you know appealing so to speak people would want to see what it feels like you know so people want to experiment they want to actually out of curiosity want to try and then have a feel so that's basically one of the major reasons why people go into these things. Of course, parents at, ho at home, you know, are also contributing to this. Because How? as we speak now, there are parents watching us who have mini bars in their house as a way of exhibiting luxury or, you know, telling the world that all is well. And this thing, it starts normally also from the home. So these children see parents having visitors coming in, drink and make all the merry, laugh big, and it makes it look like the use of alcohol and other substances comes with, you know, all those things. So they want to also experiment and see what it is like, you know, mm. because people want to belong. People want to feel grown. And when they use this substance, they feel that is a sign of maturity. 
you know. So it's, like it's I know people who say that you have to smell like a man. Your mouth has yes, to smell mouth, like a man. Yes, if you're a man, your mouth must smell <laughs> like a man. And, um, you know, it, it's a problem. I, we did a program in one of the schools, and a 13-year-old boy asked a very interesting question that when uh, his friend had told him that when King Solomon died at the upper side of the grave, a leaf germinated from that place and was found out to be marijuana. And so when you use we, you become as wise as King Solomon. I'm sure that if we hadn't been there to diffuse or correct this particular thought, it should have been a very big problem. So, so many things come into play when we talk about the use of substances, you know. And when I talk about substances, I'm talking about psychoactive substances. Psychoactive in the sense that they have the ability to alter the mind and change your mood. As I speak to you now, I am coming from the river. So most of the things that we do, that I lead to do, that I'm the director for this organization, Openest, um, I'm, I'm coming from the river. I've had my brush with tr substances for, the, for, for a period of about 19 years. I did all the drugs, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, alcohol. And of course, I was a chain cigarette smoker. You know, and I, but by the grace of God, I've been out for the past 13 years. And we've been advocating for the past 10 years. Congratulations on that. Yeah, so it tells you the, the kind of passion we have for this work we are doing. It's not about the money or whatever. It's, it's about ensuring that people don't even start at all and progress to that point where they get to be addicted to these substances and it becomes difficult if not impossible we, we we are aware that consuming alcohol excessively could be very dangerous in almost every area of one's life but looking at the the, the monitoring you've done what other consequences have you found so far you're with a health unit so mm. uh, are you seeing maybe more of alcohol related diseases among which we age can talk group? a lot we can talk a lot alcohol related diseases like diabetes heart problems and all of that you know but let me let me just register that sometimes we talk about excessive consumption of alcohol you know when you're going to have problem with alcohol it's not the quantity you take that will create the problem so I don't like it when people talk about excessive consumption so what causes the problem it, it, the problem is about you starting and getting the problem it doesn't matter there. So, so when people say that, I don't drink that much, so I'm not an, uh, you know, an addict. Or I don't have a problem with alcohol. But this same guy is falling in the gutters. This same guy is not able to be productive. He's skipping his you know, uh, duties and other things like that. So it is not the quantity that we use or even the type of drug we use, the type of alcohol. Because some people prefer that, oh, it's beer. Is, is mild <laughs> as compared to appetition, you know. So that's okay. Me, I don't drink appetition. I drink beer. So that's fine. It is not the quantity. It is not the brand or the type of drug or alcohol you are using. It's about your reaction to the substance. That makes a difference. So when you take the substance, right, and at a point in time, you feel like taking and in the absence of it, you suffer some what we call withdrawal, or what we call on the street cold techie, then it means that you already have gotten there. Now, we, we can clearly see the consequences. Let's talk about remedies. What can be done to deal with this? We started here. Education, advocacy, get the people informed. You will find one of the reasons people will get into drugs has to do with ignorance. When people are ignorant about the dangers involved in the use of these substances, they are likely to jump into it. But I, I think it's beyond education because I've spoken to addicts as well who just can't stop, mm -hmm. even though they know it's bad. So what can be done practically to help such people? Yes, and the education aspect has to do with prevention so people don't start in the first place. But those who find themselves addicted to these substances would really would have to come to terms with themselves that they are sick. The addict is a sick person. That is why on the street you say, Charlie, I'll take you, I won't go kill you. The word cure is a medical word that means that you have a condition that needs to be treated, right? So you have to come to terms with yourself that you have a problem, you are a sick person. Now, you, the soloist way of doing things where people think that I can be somewhere and on my own stop is also a fallacy. One person cannot stop using drugs single-handedly. It's, it's not possible. That's why we are there. That's why we're using this platform. And that's why I believe strongly that at this moment you are going to give us this opportunity to put our number out there because people need help it is for God and country you know so that we start by way of assessing finding out how long you have used in terms of the frequency the type of drug you have used of course people come to the center and they want to really 
limit the problems, massage the problem, the truth. I haven't, I've not I've done been using that much, but I've mentioned that it's not in the quantity. So you could briefly just give us the number. I'm sure anybody listening yes, so would want to. Yes, the number get is 0244 um, 0244 152077. And I believe strongly that it is possible to come out of drugs. I had been there, I'm 13 years sober and still counting. Thank you so much. And you heard Richard Opari, he is with Openist, and he is also an internationally certified drug counselor with the Addictive Disease uh, Unit of the Kulibuti Chin Hospital. His organization is actually affiliated to that unit of the Kulibuti Chin Hospital. Thank you so much for sharing your views with us. Now, this week marks the commemoration of the death of Jesus Christ, beginning with yesterday's memorial of the Last Supper. Today's event, Good Friday, is marked by church services and processions by Christians across the globe. In Ghana, members of the Catholic denomination are marching through principal streets as they reenact the journey Jesus took on his way to being crucified. Dubbed the Stations of the Cross, these parishioners pray, kneel, and remember the ultimate price Jesus paid for the salvation of the world. Jennifer Kuyamwa joins me in the studio. She has some education on this rite by the Catholics. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, good morning, Beatrice. Good morning. Happy Easter to you. Yeah, many happy returns. I don't, I'm not sure if that's the actual the correct <laughs> response. It's not Christmas. That's anyway. okay. So tell us about this rite by the Catholics. Tell us what you know about it. Well, um, the Stations of the Cross, there are 14 stations, and really it's a memorial of the, the last 14 things or stages of Jesus' life before you know his ultimate death on the cross at Golgotha. Uh, normally what happens is the, the parishes or the churches, the Catholic churches they designate a route and they they hold uh, maybe uh, one of the altar boys would hold a statue or a picture of Jesus and what of Jesus or whatever he was doing at that stage either praying or kneeling or his face being wiped by Veronica or the ladies and um, who were weeping at Jerusalem or being scourged so it's really those 14 steps that he he went through before he passed on so this is just done on Friday it's just done on good on the Friday, good Friday. Yes. and how long does it take well it depends on the route normally but on average it takes about between two and three hours so I was as, as a lay person mm. I uh, or as a non-catholic mm. I was wondering did they have some kind of distance that was already on, you know, during the time Jesus was going through that process. Maybe there was some calculation of the distance. Is uh, that what the Catholics try to do, that you know the distance, so you measure, it, at least just to ensure that it is almost the same as it happened well, with Well, there, there is no actually exact um, distance that was measured in those times. It was, you know, it's, it's basically reenacting what happened in the Bible. So they're not going with any set measurement. Okay, every 100 meters or every kilometer, then you have to stop. It's really just the route. And normally what they do is they, they take it. If the church is in the center, they take the principal street around before they end up in the church again. Thank you, Jennifer Kuyamwa. Some welcome. lessons there from the Catholic Church. Well, Jifa Kege is one such, you know, a person taking part in that. She is with St. Paul's Catholic Church here and joins us live on the line with some update. So what has uh, transpired so far, Jifa? Okay, thank you. Right now, Jesus Christ has been buried. We went through the full process of the Stations of the Christ, also known as Passion of the Christ, where four activities took place, condemnation, the falling of Christ, Jesus meeting his mother, and all that. So what was the atmosphere when that ceremony was being held previously i've seen people crying and doing all of that was that the sort yeah. of atmosphere that was there yes the whole place was black everybody was in black every a lot of people were crying and you could feel the pain and agony that jesus christ went through in the past the whole place was very sad and so right now everything is over uh, is that what's happening yes we just finished praying after the prayer jesus christ in the tomb you know, after, before his burial there was a crucifixion here and then the burial and the final prayer later on in the afternoon there'll be another service held for jesus 
Thank you, Jifakege is with those uh, taking part in that Catholic ride right here in Accra. You're still here on News Desk. Enjoy News on Morty TV. My name is Beatrice. We'll be back shortly with the latest in the world of business. Stay with us.